Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Gamers Podcast. My name is Jacob Best in the Realm. I'm joined today by Blackbeard Bob. Hello. And Trollbeard underscore. <laughs> uh, hey, hello. We always have to add the underscore thing. It's going to be there forever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that that was the dumb thing about, like, when I had to come up with this name. My old PSN name got banned for being inappropriate because it's one of those things I made when I was drunk, like, six years before that. Like, when the PSN first started. And I thought of the name Trollbeard. It was listed as available, but the guy who had it got banned also. Jeez. So then I'm on the phone talking to a Sony rep trying to, you know, get my account turned back on so I can play shit. So they like, I just throw another score on those. I got, like, oh, okay. How is I, uh, Trollbeard? I don't understand how that's inappropriate. Well, no, the, the old name I had on PSN, which gotcha. I didn't have internet for the entire time I had that name until oh. the PS4 started. Right, so it wasn't a problem. So then, yeah, I had bought stuff and had that name for years. <laughs> and then I then I played uh, Killzone Shadowfall Sorry. and submitted. That was like, your first like, mistake. <laughs> I mean, it, like, the, uh, they added, like, this co-op mode that was actually really good. Uh, it was, like, four-player, like, wave-based kind of horde mode. That stuff was fun. Oh. That sounds terrible. I say Bob hates hordes. Yeah. Hates <laughs> there's only there's only one horde, and that's the one in WoW. I watched a video yeah. this week of a uh, 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 strange brigade, and I sent it to uh, Jeremy, and I was like, "This looks right up your alley. It looks slightly better than Killing Floor. It looks terrible." Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say like, yeah, Strange Brigade. I had just played on the Xbox Game Pass, the Zombie Army trilogy. Which oh, is, is that, that same group one? of people? I just See, downloaded it, that, but I haven't played it. it it sounds stupid. So, like, it's it's a uh, it's essentially kind of like an official mod campaign for uh, Sniper Elite Three. Yeah, which I is a great say. game. So it's the same terrible shooting controls. Oh, fuck and, off. Like, <laughs> 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 outside of the sniping like the 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 movement and like all, all of the other parts of that that would facilitate a wave based like horde game mode you know where your primary weapons are still sniper rifles <laughs> oh fuck well uh <laughs> yeah my controller i can uninstall this <laughs> Wait, why is, it's it like why this is, is the it, very first level in the campaign. I I played this and why is and like it a I said, it was, because they had they were episodic releases. Okay. As DLC for the game uh, uh Sniper Elite 3 originally. So then they re-released it all together. So it's the same guys Rebellion that are making I like Sniper Elite. Uh, Those are Strange games. Brigade. Yeah, and Strange Brigade is like it looks better than Killing Floor just because there's like traps and collectibles and things. But yeah, yeah. Fuck, fuck that gameplay. It's just like it's so mindless. Yeah, that that was the thing I felt getting to this part, like playing through this. It was just like so generic and basic. I was and like, like, when I told Bob, or when no, last week when I had the list on there and I had Killing Floor too, I swear it came through text, but I could hear Bob. Why did you play Killing Floor 2? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta know. You know, I've dealt with people who are just blind hate. I had to know that I hated it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's the whole reason I started playing Fortnite. <laughs> and like, because even... I, told, I told myself I cannot just blindly hate a game because then I'm just a fucking yeah. troll. And... Yeah. And we're not going to talk about Fortnite this week. I can't handle it. No, we're going to talk about <laughs> Destiny instead. Oh, fuck no! We'll have a Destiny <laughs> update. Um, Yeah, no, fuck, fuck Destiny, fuck Fortnite, fuck both of them for now. Until so, later. No. When I bring it up again and you just get Fucking, depressed. Fuck Bungie, it's Bungie Day, fuck Bungie. <laughs> you were all excited earlier. Yeah, fuck them. Oh, yeah, I was all fucking excited until I read the article. Are we doing a Bungie update? <laughs> Are we doing a Destiny update right now? <laughs> 
Uh, fuck I Seattle even, already. I didn't even read the yeah, fuck <laughs> Seattle. <laughs> Above all else. No, like, but like just, they just just fuck the city they're from too. <laughs> they just came out with the the bungee day thing, which they're like basically teasing the the age of triumph for Destiny Two. And it's not all that interesting. It's like run the raid. Uh do twenty adventures. And what do you get? You get a fucking t shirt coupon. <laughs> A yeah, coupon for a t-shirt. No, it's not, not even not, a coupon. Not, it's the right. Even... It's the right to buy the fucking t-shirt. That, you know, that then... literally just reminds me of going into a Buffalo Wild Wings for the first time. Right, and there was a this. sign. I love B-dubs. Oh, so there really? was a sign, you know, like eat whatever their hottest like flavor was of wings, right, and so fast, and get a picture on the wall and get a shirt. I and I eat nothing but spicy foods. It's pretty much my favorite thing. And I just, you know, ate these things because they weren't that bad. And I talked to the lady. And, you know, they'll take your picture, but you have to buy the fucking shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, again, yeah. I had to come in here and pay $8 for some nasty-ass spicy wings just to give you, like, $25 for a fucking shirt. I was like, I- No. Just I will give say, me a tea, woman, and like, leave. I'm sad now. <laughs> coming from a from a guy who used to manage a couple small businesses, I fucking love that idea. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, yeah, just put yourself through misery if you're not a fucking savage like Trollbeard here, <laughs> and then spend twenty five dollars on a terrible shirt, right. which they didn't. <laughs> they didn't have any shirts in my size anyway. I asked, Jeez. like, hey, do you have at least a two X? Like. Uh, no, we're out of those. I guess all the other fat fucks like me are the ones that come in there and eat all those <laughs> wings. <laughs> yeah, the the bungee thing, you get an exclusive ghost after 125 points. Each of these things you unlock, you get points. And then if you get 250 points, which is actually quite a bit, you get the Moments of Triumph shirt. It says you get the shirt, but you actually get the right to unlock the shirt on the store and buy it. Uh, 300 points to get a sparrow, and then 400 points to get an emblem. <sighs> get fucked, Bungie. And 400 points for the emblem, like the least thing anybody cares about in all of Destiny, is like the longest grind. Yeah, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. And you I'm know glad what? You wasted your time reading the article. I didn't. I just looked at the rewards and shit. And the thing that's making me even angrier that I'm going to talk about later is, like, the more I play The Division, the less I want to play Destiny. And yet, Yeah, see, because for, for me, it's every minute I get older, the less I want to play Destiny. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. I'll talk about The Division right now, because it's already come up. Okay. Um, I, I, well, so other, well, actually, other than Destiny, not other than Destiny, on the topic of Destiny... Similar to Destiny, that. this show has come off the rails rather quickly Fuck, already. It's so fucking <laughs> aggravated when Destiny comes up. I don't know why you guys do this to me. Because you get so fucking <laughs> aggravated when Destiny comes up. We're just they, gonna, I'm going to start a timer and just... I'm going to try to just whip in some Destiny news the second, <laughs> as soon as possible. They announced a new rifle. It's like the Cerberus Plus One. And I guess it shoots like the scatter gun from Contra. Which is like, alright, that sounds neat. But, but how'd also, they fuck it up? What? Because like, <laughs> it's not gonna work that great in Destiny, and they're like, oh, it shoots four directions. That's all Why you got for me. That? That's all the yeah. fuck you got for me. <laughs> like... So, so you're gonna shoot three directions and yourself? I don't know. And then I, I guess see. if you aim down sights, the four barrels shoot forward, so it's just an auto rifle. I don't know. People then... are excited about it. And I couldn't give a fuck less. Um, so the only thing that gun sounds good for is shooting skanks out of the air. Yeah, right. What? What did I post the other day? I was like, oh, okay, now I'm kind of excited. About you Destiny. posted that today. I don't know uh, where you posted. Would have been Wasn't Destiny that today? Too. Oh no, it's all the Why information we... that's come out about Destiny. the Forsaken. Yeah. 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 Slightly before your weird ass Pikachu picture. Oh, those are funny. <laughs> so yeah, we're getting to go back to the Prison of Elders. We knew that. That looks neat. Some of the I, some of the enemies look neat. Three new subclass trees. Like there are things in it that look neat. I just 
Man. And then there's the Contra gun. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't know why they do this to us. Do you at least get to fly over like an S and then pick it up from there to, to at least drop a cool looking emblem? Fuck oh, no. They, they better you drop to, You have to grind for the emblem. No, that would be great. The Ingram just is like bright red with a yellow S on it. <laughs> <laughs> Emblems for life. So let, let me let me let me calm down a little bit. I'm going to talk about the division. Stop Bob. (laughs) No. So I've been playing the division. And so in Destiny, the way that you up, you increase your gear scores by doing the whole infusion bullshit. And in the division, that doesn't really matter as much, your gear score, because it it goes up little by little. But the way you do that by increasing your gear score, like you find an LMG, like I found an LMG I like, it's an M60. I found perks that I like on it. Um, I found one perk that I didn't like, and you use the recalibration station, I think. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can re-roll individually. Yeah, you like re-roll perks. the perk, and I re-rolled it to another great perk. And now they have the optimization station, so rather than having to go out and finding a bunch of fucking blue gear like Destiny and having to get this thing and that thing and this thing and infuse it, you just take it to the station, pay some materials, and you increase that weapon's gear score, along with armor as well. So, that's what I've been doing. I've been increasing and optimizing my gear, and it feels so much better than Destiny. Like, it feels like I'm going out, I'm getting these materials, and I'm bringing the weapon back, putting it on this cool crafting station, and making it better. And you go out and you feel better. You you do more damage. Yeah, because that's a good system. Yeah, it's a great well, system. Because Ubisoft responds quickly they to do. community feedback. They There's really a reason really why do. Rainbow Six Siege is almost you could, three years old now and still putting out seasonal DLC. You could have yeah. left out quickly, really. You could just oh, left it at, you could have just left it at they respond. <laughs> yeah, they, they responded at all. I was like, well, I mean, Ubisoft used those pretty quick. Oh, Bungie. <laughs> <laughs> Bungie, Bungie listens, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> they're no like a six. Bungie. They're like a six-year-old. Don't put your hands on the stove, okay? Ah! You put your hands on the stove, didn't you? Yeah. No. Knock it off. Bungie is like <laughs> a fucking teenager, <laughs> where you tell them something, and it's like, hey don't do this thing. And they're like, don't, what? Don't know what? And they just, they do it, but you know, I don't know where this analogy is going. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, they're just like, this is, this is bunch I of... heard you. Can we stop? This is, this yeah. Is no, no, that's it. That's what trolls, right? It's like, yeah, we heard you. We know what the fuck we're doing. And then they just don't do it. <laughs> this, this is who Bungie is. Have you ever been at work and you get a new employee? And you try to explain something to them, and they're like, oh, yeah, okay. And then they do it wrong. Yes, that's my life every day. Every every time. And you go, no, you have to do it like this. Oh, okay. And then they do it wrong. That happened to me today, literally. (laughs) Oh, when did you play Destiny? Shut up. No, you but, don't. no. That's it though. Bungie will say like, "Listen, we're we're taking your feedback." It's like, "All right, so we want to yeah, we want sniper it and throwing it in the trash." Yeah, it's like, "Okay, we want sniper rifles work," and they're like, "All right, give us two years." Like, whoa, wait, whoa, wait. What? Why? <laughs> Hold on. No, come back, come back. Oh, they're gone. This is like a bad. It's like a bad drug deal. Dude, I feel like whenever we give feedback to Bungie, it's like Bungie comes to the village every six months, and you have to give them as much information as possible, except that it's like the telephone game where they hear it wrong, but it gets to them, and then it's like six months later, they come back, and they're like, this is what you asked for, and you're like, no, it's fucking not! You're sending your feedback on the Pony Express, but the bag has a hole in it. Yeah, and then the feedback, and then when you're like, no, this isn't what I want, and they're like, not what you want, and they leave, and it's like, fuck, now I have to wait for another six months. <laughs> their, 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 their responses come back, like, we had the courage to make these changes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Meanwhile, oh. Ubi 
Ubisoft, who is like, yeah, for honor, yeah, we fucked up a little bit. We're tripling down, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, they brought for honor back. They of did. all the insane things they've done, Ghost Recon is still highly active. Yeah. And they brought for honor back from the dead. Like, wow. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, they were like, oh, you love, uh, you love, oh my god, what? What did you just say? It's still active. Ghost Recon. Ghost Recon. Thank you. You love Ghost Recon single player. You want more single player. Here's more single player. Also, we made a badass multiplayer mode. You didn't ask for. <laughs> oh, also, <laughs> one weekend we're gonna have the predator hunting people. They did a timed event that was yeah. the actual oh, yeah. predator yep, yep, the yep. fucking movies. Well, we <laughs> I was it. like, what? It's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's, why? Why are we doing that? Because it's fun. Yeah. Why not? Which reminds me, we need to play more Wildlands. Yeah, we do. Even though every time I say that, you're like, oh, I'm going to fall asleep playing Wildlands. Uh, no, that was only because it was like at night when I was at like this time. I got to play something. Wildlands is so slow, but in a good way. It can be. I play it slow, so I guess that's my fault. I like I to be it's sneaky. entirely your fault. I'm a sneaky, I'm a sneaky beaver. But I've just been playing a bunch of Division. Um, like I said, the more I play of it, the more I get aggravated with Destiny. Because Division just plays so well. Um, like, and one thing that, that aggravates me is, you know, Bungie will tell us, well, we can't do prestige matchmaking because X reason. How come I can do matchmaking for everything in the Division? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it can't be because of the difficulty because division's hard as fuck yeah it's the... a lot harder than fucking destiny that's for sure uh yeah I yeah I'd say so yeah no definitely and, and I've been looking at stuff for division 2 and it's obvious that they're listening because people didn't hate the mod system in division but they were like this isn't great so it's definitely a flawed system but not terrible it's all right. It's just not all that inspiring. So they're just mostly saying, fuck it in Division 2, and when you unlock a mod, you have it forever, and it's not in your inventory. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And I think we're going to learn more about some of the other stuff, but a lot of it's going to stay the same. And uh, the gear sets are a blast. Like, I've been combining gear sets. Like, if you have four of one gear set, you get, like, the basically an exotic perk for it. Um, but there's also like two or three and four. Like right now I'm running uh Oh my god. The hell is it? Lone Lone Star? So whenever I switch to my secondary from my primary, it reloads the other one. Oh, okay. Is, it's fucking great. And then I'm also running uh two nomad pieces so I can heal passively on all three of my health bars rather than just the one. So it's a really, really good solo build, and I'm running, like I said, my LMG with over 200 rounds, and I found a really nasty sniper, a bolt-action sniper, and I've got a sawed-off shotgun. It's great. And I can solo pretty much everything. And then when I do the hard missions and challenging missions, I do matchmaking, and we have a blast, and I say, okay, bye, guys. <laughs> and it's lovely. And then there's Destiny. Stop. So stop. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. And, like, you know, I do... I love the world of Destiny more because, like... I mean, it has more story if Bungie would fucking let it. Well, those wizards, they came from the moon. <laughs> and that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Peace magic. <laughs> Uh, don't, I don't. Uh, I like that your response to how Bungie handles feedback is exactly, you know, the end of the. Destiny. We don't have time to explain what we don't have time to explain. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Also, go on our website and read these little cards for who knows how long. But yeah, yeah. Guys, guys like my name is Bife shouldn't have to explain the story. No, because the story should be in the fucking game. And it should actually be good, because the the campaign of Destiny wasn't very good. The campaign and the division was pretty damn good, and I'm yeah. actually very excited about the story, and uh, too. 
You know what's unfortunate about the first division? What's that? Is that I literally got to the last campaign mission oh. and then stopped playing entirely. You need to get it on PC and we need to play. I have zero interest in playing any division ever again. Son of a bitch. <laughs> well, it's just like, you know, like, it's, it's it pretty much any of these games that are long-term commitments. It's like, I already have a job. <laughs> yeah. And, well, and, I, and I don't want to grind anything. Gr- the grind died for me, like, years ago. I feel it's like, like I don't care. This is this is something I've talked about before. I feel like there's a difference between grinding and just playing a game. Because I, I don't feel like I'm ever grinding in the division. Because, and especially right now, if you log in right now, they give you all the, the 256 gear. So you're at end game. You're at world tier 5. And then you can just play until you get weapons that you like, and armor that you like, and find abilities that you like. And you say, okay, now I'm going to optimize this. And yeah, yeah you're trying to get and the that's the the part I just don't care about anymore. Okay, like, min maxing, redoing the same missions. I'd ra- I'd rather go spend like twenty bucks, find a couple weird indie games. I get that. I one hundred percent get that. That I mean, it's like that's I'd I'd weird. rather go have a weird new experience that's probably terrible. Than I go back to something I'm comfortable with. But you I always just have... go outside. I do always have one game that's like my go-to to relax. Right now, that's the Division and Battle Chef. Um, yeah, right now for me, that's been Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when I'm not doing the pro- recording the Project One Sixty Eight videos, that I'm playing the Division or I'm playing Battle Chef, and I'm actually going to be playing Battle Chef and recording it now. So I was doing earlier. Uh. I love that game. Yeah, I think I'm going to be playing The Division for quite a while. Probably not until March, not until Division 2. Are you going to buy the fucking Destiny expansion, Bob? I already told you no. Okay. I'm not going to buy it until everyone else seems to think it's good. And if everyone else seems to think it's good, I will look into it. That is fair. Also, I want to know more about you know, why we have to spend an extra 30 bucks on whatever's coming out over the next year. Because <laughs> there's another yeah, your, thing that the death... The your division expansion did. pass. <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? They're like, well, they want you to expand that ass, is what they're saying. Yeah. Just give us your booty. Because from <laughs> what I understand is it's going to unlock more stuff in this September expansion over the next year. But I think there's also going to be more DLC alongside that. I just why can't why can't they just put it all into one expansion and then have that expansion last like a fucking year or two where you have plenty of content? Isn't that how WoW does it? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's how that's how games that know what they're doing do, do it. It's not just WoW. It's fucking everything. I mean, I guess you could make the argument that that's what they're doing if you pay seventy dollars. I mean, you pay even when a new WoW expansion comes out, you pay $60. Yeah. But you're paying $60 once for something that's going to last two years, at least. Yeah, is it that long? Usually. Damn. Is it Division 2? They said like all of our expansion stuff is going to be free. And that's another great way to do it, because I'm never going to complain about new stuff to do for free. And I know some people are saying, like, oh, well, that means they're going to put more uh, cosmetic shit in it. I'm like, all right, that's fine. Why is that a bad thing? <laughs> the Division 1 already has a massive fucking shit ton of cosmetic yeah, stuff. <laughs> I've got cosmetic stuff in the Division I'm never going to wear. I have so much stuff. And you know what? That's another thing I was going to say. is So, in the Division, when you do... I think it's when you do your daily missions, but I feel like I, I also collect them from random loot, you get pieces of a cipher key. And then when you get, like, nine, you get a cipher key, which is the cosmetic loot crate. And when I play, I unlock at least, like, eight of them in the week. (laughs) That's quite a bit of cosmetic shit. Yeah, for free. Yeah. 
And then, I mean, of course, you can go into the Ubisoft store and use your UB points or whatever the fuck they are and get a bunch, too. So, I think the problem is people need something to complain about. Yeah. Instead of just admitting, hey, this game's pretty fucking good. And, you know, it's... And, the, like, the Division, if they do say, like, yes, all of our in-game content is going to be free, but we are going to have more cosmetics than ever or whatever. You know, because they got to make money. Yeah. At the end of the day, these companies do have to make money. Yep. But, well, let's get what we into what we've been playing. Uh, Troll, you said you've been playing Cube 2? Uh, yeah, so... Uh, you know, Twitch Prime, Amazon Prime, heads up for Prime Day. They've been giving out all these free games. So eventually, I will get around the Battle Chef Brigade now. Hell yeah! Give that a, give that a shot at least. But I I was playing some of the Cube Two earlier today. I had played the original Cube because I bought it for like a couple dollars, like like three or four dollars on PSN quite a few years ago. You know, it's a very specific odd uh kind of portal type game okay that's what i was thinking it kind of was a portal yeah the the first one was a lot more like directly portal because it was just more like austere white chambers you were like on a space <laughs> station all this weird stuff this one apparently it's almost like the movie the cube the horror movie <laughs> <laughs> where like you're in a like a sentient living cube thing and you're doing puzzles you've got these gloves to uh alter the cube at will as you go through and uh you eventually unlock as you'll see here in this video oh there are color schemes that do different things huh. so you place like you know the color down and then you interact with it. so there's red makes those Pillars stick out of like the cube spot. Blue is a bounty pad. Green oh. drops an actual like cube you can use to be like a weight. Like imagine like the companion cube from Portal. And uh, yeah, I mean it just seems like another you know another random puzzle game. That's I uh, though. yeah, it's it's literally like they ticked off all of the boxes of, like, feature sets available for Unreal Engine 4. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a really good-looking game. Well, I yeah. feel like that's probably a good idea if you're a small developer to be like, look, we can do everything. Yeah, because it, it doesn't control the greatest. Okay. Like, it has, like, some weird... Uh, some weird uh, input lag, I want to say, from, like, the actual, like, responding to those clicks there. I do like the hands not meant to be... flailing in the air. <laughs> yeah, it's not meant to really be played at high speeds. It's not like the insane like challenge rooms of Portal or uh, a really good puzzle game that's weirder even than the game itself based on the team that made it. Um, what is it, Crow Team? Uh, crap. They're the guys who made Serious Sand, they made this insane puzzle game Really? That takes place in the digital rapture. Uh, what What in the world? Oh my what? god, I just had the name in the back of my head. But yeah, like the you wake up in like the rapture? simulation. Yeah, so like you're in a simulation. Is and it the Tal- Talos Principle? Talos Principle, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this whole weird biblical stuff of you waking up, you're in a simulation... And you're pretty sure, as time goes by, that the actual biblical rapture happened. <laughs> and what? you're just living out the rest of your consciousness in a simulation. Like, there's a whole there's a whole lot of shit to the Talos Principle. <laughs> Talos Principle is fucking crazy. I recommend anybody play it if they want a crazy, hard puzzle game with lasers. <laughs> this, this looks neat. This looks like some witness shit. Yeah, which I played The Witness. I got pretty deep into The Witness. It was just... Man, The Witness is ridiculous. How long is The Witness? Uh, I mean, depending on how how much you actually want to commit to it. I mean, you you could spend, you know, probably a month of your personal life trying to get through The Witness. Because when I... 
when the witness came out, like the amount of people I saw, like online on Twitter, like pulling out fucking graph paper and notebooks oh and throwing shit on the ground, you know, like like the fucking meme from uh, "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia" about Pepe Sylvia, like <laughs> that's that's how people were, you know, like string on a string on the board, like all right, and this does this, and this does that, and uh. <laughs> You know, the people trying to figure out how to get through this because, yeah, there are certain puzzles that are pretty straightforward. And then it gets into weird layers of types of puzzles. So once you learn, like, the basic function of that type of puzzle, you just have to then solve a really hard yeah. puzzle. It's really neat, though. <laughs> that world is beautiful. Yeah, there. there's also, like, the most interesting thing I remembered seeing coming across is, like, right at the beginning you encounter one of the ambient puzzles, I guess you'd call it, of you aligning, like, the world to solve a puzzle. So, like, there's, like, a a, a tree that's lined up, and you've got to, like, you've got to, like, turn your camera and be at the right spot right. to get the trees, the forks of the tree to hit a certain pattern. And then it opens the door. You're like, that's crazy. There was another game. Oh, Batman did that. We had to like look at. Oh yeah, the, like the the giant question marks. Yeah. In the Riddler puzzles. But yeah, there was a lot of odd, uh, you know, ambient puzzle solving of like the inputs you needed for this one puzzle were the reflections of stone pillars in the water. So you you had to do the inverse of the pillars. Like you'd see the pillars, like this one's mid, this one's high, this one's low. You had to look at the the reflection at that angle. Yeah, it's, the witness was crazy. I, I had to give up on it because it was yeah. one of those things where, unless I was just gonna look up how to solve certain puzzles, because there were some puzzle forms. Like even after I read the rules on like some wikis. They were still like, huh? Because <laughs> <laughs> like some of the puzzles are hard enough, and then I want to say like the extended versions, some of them pop up, where then there's also color coding. So not only do you then have to solve the puzzle, you have to solve it in the right order based on the color code. <laughs> sounds great, doesn't it, Bob? No, it sounds fucking <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Talos principle makes more sense. Talos principle is a lot more feel wise directly like portal, but you deal with a lot of lasers and weird shit. But you can, you know, if you figure out sight lines, you can, you know, cheese through a lot of the Talos principle. Rainbow Six Siege. Like that I'm more okay with. <laughs> I one of my life goals in this whole future villains company thing. Is that one day I have enough money to not work, and hopefully Bob not work, just so I can get Bob to play games like Cook Serve Delicious and The Witness. <laughs> <laughs> just because that, I think that would be hilarious to watch. <laughs> me, me not working is never going to happen. <laughs> Maybe one day when this company no. becomes massive. No, I have way too way too gravy of a job to give it up. One day we'll see. <laughs> no, no, I'm telling you. <laughs> what else have you been playing, Troll? Uh, the only other thing of real note that I actually was really getting into and I didn't realize until I looked at the Steam Summer Sale that there was another game in the series was the Kingdom New Lands. Which is a game Bob's a big fan of. I am a big fan of. However, I did not know that there were other games. There, There's another game at least called like kingdom last something oh, apparently is it a new game or dlc it, i think i think the uh the other game was either the original concept or like a dlc i guess okay but yeah i just you know i i've always been a big pixel art guy i've always really appreciated it and like there's really good like small scale animations for this game like the lighting the reflections in the water yeah 
the the sounds, the music, very mm-hmm. relaxing. And it's just so barren. Like you just go in, you're just this king, you ride into this new area and you throw money at all your problems. <laughs> like a Dude, like a true you king. Do. <laughs> yeah. Li- literally awesome. like you, you run by a homeless camp and throw a coin at them, and now they're part of your kingdom. Holy yeah, so shit, then you gotta I... go throw money to then buy like a bow and arrow, or buy a hammer, or buy a scythe to hunt or I, to, to to farm. I didn't even consider it that way. Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, you literally like everything you do, you just have to throw money at it. So there's two button inputs in the entire game. Yeah, one is to make your horse move faster, and one is to throw money at your problems. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That is a, a really, really good game. And that's on Game Pass on Xbox. That's on the Xbox Game Pass. It was on that. sale. This and the like, whatever other thing in the series was like two dollars and twenty cents. Oh, wow. On the Steam sale, wow. it go, this thing goes on sale all the time on Steam, and I've seen it in humble bundles. But I, I just never bought it. Yeah. But I gave it a shot, and yeah, it's one of those things where if this were on like a phone I and mean, I were just hanging out, it probably somewhere. is. You it's, know on, it's on. Yeah, it's on the Switch. Yeah, they just recently put it on the Switch. You know that it was one of those like two Thursdays ago. I want to say. No. Uh-uh. Yeah, Kingdom's been on yeah. there for a while. It even it it's had uh, a the original time. icon was really ugly, and they made Nintendo oh, change okay. it. <laughs> well, no, then it was it was on one of the weekly sales. Then recently on Switch, that it could that I believe. Yeah, I remember seeing it pop up on one of those menus. The rare times I turn my Switch on. <laughs> this would be a perfect Switch game. I'm gonna play it on Xbox just because I have Game Pass. I, yeah, uh, I don't remember what I paid for it on the Switch, but it was worth it. Whatever I spent, isn't it like fifteen bucks? I don't remember. It was I bought it a long time ago, like when I first got the Switch. Yeah, that's a that's one of those games that could really do with a demo. Just because, like, you look at it and you're like, I don't know if I'd like that, but well, yeah. I, also, I'd... like, it doesn't tell you really, you know how to do stuff so i like screwed up so bad at the beginning oh yeah because i didn't realize that right in and it's just ever extending left or right based on you know what you spend money on and it, it so does stop yeah because i ran all the way to the right at the very beginning going through all this crap and then i hit like a boat dock and then as yeah. i came back i saw a spot i could build i said okay not realizing that i would literally be running you know, for a minute and a half back and forth between my main campfire and this one <laughs> thing I built and the horse gets oh, tired and then you're walking so you're like, God damn you horse. And then, then things <laughs> God damn you me. fucking take your crown. Have you had that happen yet? No, I didn't things. get I didn't get super far into it before I, I, I stopped and moved on to something uh, else. Okay, so it if was, you're if you're like out in the in the wild at night, these little like demented shy guy looking things. Yeah, I saw on the, the the screen here they had attacked and yeah. they were, you know, well, throwing if you're, stuff like Right. If you're outside your walls, they just come up on you <laughs> and they'll they'll knock your crown off your head. And if you don't get your crown back, that's game over. It's yeah, an interesting man. game. I've had a lot of fun. Yeah, I need yeah. To just the switch. the ambient sounds alone, and the the church bell sound every time the new day mm-hmm. rolls around. It, the art style and like the lighting and everything reminds me of Octopath Traveler. Yep. Yeah, and I'm like, I really don't really care about pixel graphics, but this I game and graphics. Octopath both look incredible. Octopath comes out in a couple days. Yeah. Four days now, I guess. I think it's just because there's so many games out there that are like, we're artsy pixel graphics. And it's like, no, you're lazy and look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's definitely a difference between like good oh, pixel art fucking... style and just shitty games. Pixel graphics. I beat Bloodstained today. With Curse oh, of the Moon? Yeah. 
The Dude. giant wave of bats. The game is hard <laughs> as fuck. Is that what those were supposed to be? Yeah, that's that's a it's a, it's a, it's a wave of bats. I want to say it's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 like uh, the krill from like the original Gears of War. They're just like yeah. flying through, eating everything, tearing them all apart. Oh, and <laughs> you know, I was thinking today when those things were like all over the screen chasing me, I'm like, I've never been so scared by a pixel game. <laughs> <laughs> they're terrifying. Someone has never played Metroid. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a good point. No, I have definitely played Metroid. <laughs> oh, I want a new Metroid game. Yeah, don't we all? I should probably just get Axiom Verge. You really should, because that game's fantastic. It's even on sale right now. Just yeah, it, it, it's just on sale it. all the time. Yeah, that's just, why. I, just buy it right now. Help old Tom Hap out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's guy. like one guy that made it, right? It's a fucking yeah. Edition from same hell. same thing with Stardew Valley. Yes. Like the the amount of money the Star is insane. Yeah, that guy's made a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Like this even is... after all the seller cuts, he's easily made over twenty million dollars. Which is kind of annoying Jeez. that nothing new has come out for it. But it's coming out <laughs> really slow. Yeah, so that's one guy just, doing it all. Didn't they just put in uh, multiplayer? <laughs> They're about to. No, it's not one guy doing it all now. He's got a fucking team. Yeah. But, I don't know. He's got uh, a team of one other guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll love that game until the end of time. Stardew Valley's pretty fun. I do need, like, a new, like, kind of, like, farming, like, well, you just gave me Conan, Troll. So I might yeah. give that a shot, but I'm not you're, you're you're like everybody else who's a giant Nintendo dork that wants a new Animal Crossing on the Switch already. No, um, I don't. Not necessarily Animal Crossing. I don't. I like Animal Crossing, but I like Stardew Valley and uh, what's the other farming one? Well, Harvest Moon. Moon. Harvest Moon. Yeah. As I say, didn't they just put out a Harvest Moon on the Switch? I think so. They also put out um. Oh shit! There's another game that just came out on Switch that's like that. It's like a 3D, the Yonder Chronicles. Oh yeah. Yeah. And well, I'm waiting for my time at Porsche, because that's what I'm gonna put on Switch. You know, now that we oh, mentioned yeah. Harvest Moon, I'm just kind of trying to remember anything else not Sume ever made. Why are these new Harvest Moons? I guess a lot of people aren't happy with. Because it's a different company making them now? Yeah. Or something like that? No, it's the same company, apparently. Unless... No, I think like, it's a uh, different one. Something well, something changed and, like, the fan base was not thrilled. Yeah, well, maybe it's a different development team, but they're still published by Nanime. As of, like, 2014, you know, one of these uh, more, most recent game for 3DS was still made by Natsume. Hmm. Yeah, and they also change it to Story of Seasons. Story of Seasons. Oh, Natsume lost the license to Harvest Moon. So okay, so then, yeah, it would have just changed. So Harvest Moon is made by different people, it looks like. Or the other way around. I don't know. Hmm. I mean, I haven't played a Harvest Moon game since, like, you know, I you know I got N64. Harvest Moon on the DS and like I like it okay. I think I'm spoiled by Stardew Valley. That game Probably. is really fucking good. Um, I'm ready for a 3D type game of that though. That's why I'm excited about my time at Portia. Yeah, that that one does look pretty good. I played a little bit of it. It's pretty damn good. I think uh, probably gonna jump back on City Skylines here soon. That's another like management game I want to start playing more of. What is that? Just like SimCity, except so much better. Oh, really? That and uh, uh, shit, the Roller Coaster Tycoon type game, but it's like theme parks and stuff, Roller Coaster World or something. Jurassic World? No, I wish. That's what I want. I do. I want to. I want to buy that one day. No, what is this called? Planet Coaster. Yeah, Planet Coaster is what I was going to say. So good. 
good. I've only played a little bit of it. I bought it full price because I was like, I'm going to play a bunch of this game that fucking didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of games I paid full price and then just the mood never hit me to actually get to it. I had Dishonored 2 sitting, you know, just waiting for me to get around to playing it since the day it came out. <laughs> Or you spend like almost a hundred dollars on it, put hundreds of hours into it, and just end up hating it. That's yeah, never that happened was, uh... to me. That's never happened to me before. Real no. life. <laughs> Real life. I'm addicted to video games. <laughs> quickly, quickly <laughs> get to a different subject. Uh... <laughs> that's it, that's it. Did you have anything else well, yeah, you were before playing? the before the B or D word comes back up? Do you have anything else you were playing, troll? Uh, not really. I. uh... I tried a couple other things through the game pass, not stuck. But Kingdom New Lands was great. And uh yeah, we already mentioned stupid uh what about Zombie uh, Army trilogy. Yeah. What about the Battle Block Theater? Uh yeah, Battle Block Theater I gave it a shot because I, I a lot of the uh co op stuff from the Behemoth towards like the end of the three sixty era I wasn't, you know, playing that much because at the end, I want to say Mass Effect 3. I finished, you know, my playthrough of Mass Effect 3 because that was where I had started. So I had, like, my whole save system, you know, transferred over playing through the Mass Effect trilogy. And then it was either that or the the last Gears of War 3. Whichever one of those came out later, I finished that game and immediately sold my Xbox. So so I, I, I... I missed out on, you know, all of Battle Block Theater when it was in its prime. But yeah, it's just a Yeah, what the you know, fuck is it? Little... <laughs> well, it's a, it's a it's a platformer. Uh and you're hunting collectibles and stuff like that. It's weird. Like you're this weird guy, you crash land on a island that has this theater that's your your friends or whatever, there's like a cursed hat put on the guy who's leading your boat. And you're just do you're just doing weird stuff. It's a sounds you're weird. Playing th- you're playing through actual stages of a theater to do stuff. Okay, yeah, this looks pretty cool. It's a the co-op part is where it got interesting because, like you see, there's a co-op mechanics between the people. So you can put your hand down to pick somebody up. You can flick people like you saw him throw the other guy. But yeah, playing it alone is definitely not something I'd recommend. Especially, you know, you know now, like, yeah, here's the scene where Hattie here gets thrown on, you know, this guy, and now he's crying, like, Binding of Isaac style at all times. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, you're just side-scrolling, doing weird, like, doing weird like jump puzzles and this looks you know neat. time-based puzzles looking for little stars on each map and you unlock all sorts of little you know hats helmets you know color schemes all sorts of weird stuff but yeah it's it's available on the you know the battle pass if you got somebody that can sit down with you and play together Is that it's the, a lot uh, the of Fortnite fun. battle pass that it's available on yeah <laughs> you know the <laughs> Claire knows the vent pass. <laughs> you know, <that's> a... <laughs> I was like, the fuck did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> Play too much Fortnite. Yeah. Like so, I said, to wake up all after my, my nap. I... All my uh, games are available on the Forsaken uh, Destiny expansion pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this game does look pretty neat. Yeah, yeah like, all of the... Play this for five minutes. Yeah, all the Behemoth games have been pretty fun. That's I played about thirty, Bob. So you're not wrong. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. This just seems like a game that I sit down. And be like, I got I got ten minutes. I'll sit down and play. Yeah, this. it's it's super short. You know, level by level based things. Like it's crazy. Like the old days of the Xbox Live Arcade, of like the screens actually do look straight up like like mobile game, like. <laughs> Like like boards there like this could easily be ported to phones. Probably is. Uh, I I don't think it is. Uh, I I think I actually looked. I think I was curious. 
Bay jump, he catches you, pulls you up. Hmm. Those things explode. That thing is hot, so it throws you. Well, see, I think if like if I knew that this was something I could play through in like two or three hours, I would buy it and play through it with Kimberly or something. I I yeah, enjoy I mean, the shorter games now, especially ones like this. Yeah, it's you know it's a lot like Castle Crash. It's I, just, I enjoy know, Castle Crashers. But this one is just, you know, you're just jumping around. It reminds me of something more recent you could actually get a hold of fairly soon, fairly cheap, Unravel 2. Yeah. Is yep. co-op now. That's pretty cool. This is obviously made by the uh, Castle Crasher guys. Yeah, the Behemoth is the name of the company. Yeah. Alien Hominid, Castle Crashers. Oh, Alien Hominid. Uh, wow. I was to say, this reminds me of that. Yeah, like weird Newgrounds flash game developers, you know, yeah. became a legitimate studio. People are actually interested in what they do. That's amazing. Although I don't know of any people really that have much good to say about pit people, which is unfortunate. I think it's supposed to be good and they're making it better. Yeah. But that's why it's early access. Yeah. It's got a, it's got a lot of work cuz right now poor pit people it just does look interesting to me. I like games like that, like that turn based. It's like hex combat, isn't it? Yeah, but the problem is, is like you don't have individual control of the. You're just kind of placing. Oh, we're losing you. Yep. Oh, hello? Yeah, you don't have what? I was going to say, problem with pit people is you don't have actual control over the individual units. Oh. Like, you place them, and they have behavior patterns, I want to say, and they go and kind of attack in whatever mode they feel like. Oh, that's a, no, that sounds like something I'd want to play on Switch or my tablet. Cause that, that's yeah. like Pokemon Quest. Yep, I was say, it just sounds exactly like Pokemon Quest. That sounds good. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a Windows platform exclusive. That's fine with me. Sources are bullshit, but those are the platforms I have. <laughs> <laughs> it's on, you know, Xbox or PC. Doesn't Behemoth make their stuff for Xbox only? Uh they're 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 not officially owned by Xbox, but ever since uh uh was it say Battle Block, they've been pretty much only yeah Xbox and Windows. Was it Alien Hominid an Xbox thing? Yep. Yeah, Alien Hominid HD, when they released that, because, you know, Alien Hominid was a Flash game on Newgrounds. Yeah, you know? yeah, of course. They made they made the full version of that. That was, like, one of the early Xbox Live Arcade, like, popular titles. Yeah. Before, you know, more full-fledged, like, standard games people would actually play now, like Shadow Complex and other stuff started coming out. You know, it was one of those smaller, bite-sized weird games that that was like idiotically hard because it was trying to be metal slug <laughs> i never really thought of that yeah i mean th that game alien hominid is literally just flash metal slug you still huh. get in vehicles the same way <laughs> yeah yeah same shot patterns a as as one of the uh the the world's biggest metal slug fans i immediately knew it was metal slug and i it's the only reason I played Alien Hominid. Oh, so you must be happy about Metal Slug on Twitch. Uh, I hadn't really looked at it. Is it what the Twitch plays Metal Slug? Well, no, it's going to be one of the free games this month for Twitch. Oh, right? yeah, the Metal Slug 3. I, like, I've got all those collections sitting oh, around. Okay. And I, I cranked up and played a little bit of the uh, Metal Slug 3, I think, is the one they gave out for the Twitch Prime. I, I, I played it a little bit. I was like, ah... Uh, Good times. Yeah, Metal Slug's <laughs> fun. Speaking the of the insanity of those pixel arts, <laughs> the amount of money they spent on arcade cabinet pixel art is insane. There's a reason why SNK doesn't do anything new anymore. <laughs> <laughs> They're still making their money back off of the yeah. Metal Slug series. <laughs> Speaking of uh, good old games, Bob's been playing Pokemon Red. Yeah. What's up with that? What made you want to play that again? Uh, so I'm I'm one of those people, and I know there are, are others out there that do this a little more frequently than I do. But 
every couple of years I'll sit down and basically play through a bunch of, if not all the older games. It's however, each year it gets a lot harder to play through all the games because they just keep fucking coming out with more. Yeah. I can't fucking, I can't keep up with that shit. <laughs> I have yet, you know, I own all four Gen 7 games. All four. Four? Oh, yeah, I guess there are four. Yeah. But uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then regular Sun and regular Moon. Did you play through Sun and Moon? I have yet to beat a Gen 7 game. Oh, shit. <laughs> I can't do it. I get to, like, this, the third island in every game, and I'm like, why am I still playing this? Yeah, why Why? Why am I doing this? <laughs> and it's not because I, I just, they're, they, I don't know if they bore me or what. This is the first time I've never been able to finish a Pokemon game. I think the problem, like, the problem I'm having with Pokemon is it's literally, like, go to this island and beat this guy. All right, that's I, fine. And then it's like, it's just that. It's wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. And, like, after a while, that does get old. Like, you get newer Pokemon, but... Well, I mean, even the older games or any any previous game doesn't necessarily have to be an old game. But any of the previous games, I mean, they, they didn't seem like that. I mean, it was at well, least that's... an adventure. Yeah, games were simpler then, though. You know, now games are, like, evolving. The more you play them, the more complex they get. Pokemon hasn't got to that yet. No, because originally it was just like, and now it's complex. It and just I will say that, way. that, because we've talked about this before, this is baby's first RPG. <laughs> it oh, is, sure. at the end of the day, a kid's game. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm just a kid at heart. I should be able to retain my fucking attention. Oh yeah, it's just it's a really long game that's all about you know wash rinse repeat kind of thing. Yeah, I mean watching the like we talked about today the the championships were on. Yeah, um, that actually made me want to play Ultra Sun or Ultra Moon again. I think I want to watch. <laughs> I want to watch the shows and play it while I'm doing that. Oh, the shows are great. Wow, and Kimberly just texted me, are we doing the Pokemon event tomorrow? <laughs> oh, there's a Pokemon event tomorrow? And, and Pokemon Go. Oh. Did you see that? No. All eggs are like four times oh, less or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I did see that. I did see that. Yeah, so we're gonna All go hatch 10 a bunch kilometer of... eggs are like two kilometer yep. eggs or something like that. We're going to go hatch a bunch of eggs. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. I have a bunch of Alolan eggs that I don't I don't have any. Really? Yeah, because I have a bunch of eggs. I never hatch eggs because I never go walk around with it. Oh. I just that's not a thing. I guess I can walk around the neighborhood. Yeah, but... I just I I walk circles around the building at work. <laughs> I've 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 got a friend that he and his wife and his kids are still big into Pokemon Go. And the amount of random parents he has, like, the phone numbers for. Because we live out in the middle of nowhere, like, fairly rural south. So they got to, like, conspire to get together to do all this random Pokemon Go events. I'll just be driving through this town and just see my buddy parked in the parking lot with, like, three of the cars around him. <laughs> like, like <laughs> this looks shady as fuck, but it's Pokemon. Like, I would rather it be a drug deal. Like, yeah. I'd be less embarrassed. <laughs> there there are quite a few spots in town where you'll see a car going slow and you're like, they play Pokemon. There's literally yeah. no reason to be over in that spot of town and be driving that slow. They're playing Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, also, I... can I just say one thing? This what? video is bothering me of Pokemon. Uh-oh. Is that... The Pokemon named John Cena isn't a ghost type because I can see him. Thank you. Damn. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just immediately saw. I was like, "How do you not name we, uh, a ghost we type watched... Pokemon John Cena?" I'll I'll take what it off so you're not so triggered. We uh, I was we like... watched a movie the other day that had John Cena in it. Was it that Blockers? Yeah, that's supposed to be and, really uh, good. 
I was in the kitchen and I was like, oh, well, who's in it? And Rachel was telling me, and she was like, John Cena, as I was walking in and looking at the, uh, I don't know what you would call it, box art, we'll say. And uh, I was like, I don't see John Cena anywhere. She's like, he's right there. Where? <laughs> what do you mean, where? Have you never, seen the video mind. of me and Brian fucking with Lance, waking him up with the John Cena thing? No. I Oh my god, I'm sending you that video later. That's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> Brian cutting a promo on Lance to wake him up. That was great. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lance is so mad. <laughs> oh, God. So yeah, just you're. Are you gonna play through Pokemon Red, or are you gonna try to? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna play through it right now. I'm what are you trying to? You're playing it on uh, your DS. Yeah. Okay. So you can at least transfer stuff. Yeah, you told me the other day you needed a vile plume. I'm thinking about it. I'm still undecided. I don't. Oh, yeah. I, I can't remember if I have one or not. I have to see. Well, I can trade you like a gloom or something. Just trade it back. Right. Or what... Yeah, that's true. Because I figured since Red and Blue have you know, the version exclusives, I should try to use some of those yeah. instead of using the same team I've been using since yep. you know, I was six years old. <laughs> Time to switch it up a little bit. Somebody asked me the other day, like, why is Nino Reno your buddy in Pokemon Go? I'm like, because Nino Reno and Nino King are the fucking badasses. <laughs> oh, yeah. I plan on using a Nino King. Nino King is the best. Oh, give he can learn fire... like everything. Yeah, you can give him like Fire Punch and Thunderbolt, Blizzard, and uh, Surf. The... You can, but no, I give him uh, the one thing that could be a one hit KO Horn Drill. Horn Drill. Actually, and you could even substitute one of those other three with Earthquake. Yeah, I would use Earthquake. But Horn Drill sucks. I don't like Horn Drill. Horn Drill's so good if it fucking works. Yeah, if. if Isn't it, it like one of those, like, it's only got like five shots? Five percent. Yeah, but it's like 5% accuracy. I think it's more... Well, no, see, no, that's, it's, that's it's what five, you do. It's 5% accuracy. Yeah, but you can use that... The uh, You can give him, like, candies. Not candies, but things to buff the yeah, accuracy. Yeah, but that takes, that takes so long. Or you could just wipe something out with Earthquake and have a more useful move than Horn Drill. I, I, I'm famous for buffing my Nido King ridiculously with accuracy and giving his Horn Drill even more... Is and it... this is and this is why I don't play competitive Pokemon. I only do with Nido King. Because I don't have the patience. <laughs> I don't have patience for shit like that. Well, I don't either. Why but every this guy just nickname is Mankey Finland. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I don't either. I just every time I get you know the the whatever it is to make your accuracy higher, I give it a Nido King. And when I give get the one to give it the the pee pee up, I give it to Nido King, and put his horn drill up. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> he's got pills to get that pee pee up. Yeah, yep. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I, uh, I decided I was gonna stick with Pidgey this time because I normally go with Spiro. I yeah, I always go with Pidgey. And uh, I I realized that Gust, which in every other game except for Generation One, is a flying move, but in Generation One, it's a normal move, not a flying type move. Yeah. Huh. So it literally is fucking pointless to use Pidgey until like level 20 something if you don't evolve it or level 30 something if you do evolve it. It's fucking worthless. I was like, really? And I was like, oh, that's all right. I'll teach Fly to Charizard, which you can only do in yellow version and up. <laughs> It's like you gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> yeah, like the the weird like class changes and type changes of moves, and some Pokemon got reclassified categories. Mm-hmm. And I had I had a guy I knew that was really big into doing the like the competitive like Pokemon stuff, and I remember him telling me about trying to get like the right, you know personality or attribute or whatever oh, it is like yeah 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 and literally like he was just hatching eggs and like throwing pokemon out of the wild like it was like the cliff of sparta just <laughs> <laughs> it's like you it's are crazy. Not people go through like <laughs> hundreds 
Oh my god, it's hundreds nuts. of hashtags just yeah, trying see, to get I've the right. Seen, no. I've seen the amount of times people have done like soft resets to get shiny Pokemon. I won't do that. In like the thousands. Nah. Nothing. No, it ain't, it ain't that fucking important to me. Nah. Also, then you're just, that's just work. Yeah, and I'm not working. I don't, I'm not playing it to work. I'm playing it because I enjoy Pokemon. Pokemon is one of those games where it's like, look, this was my adventure. And it's like, oh, but that thing's fucked up. It's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like, there's a story behind it, though. <laughs> you know? And otherwise, yeah. it's like, here's my 3,000 Pokemon. Oh, what about that one? Oh, I don't know. I caught that years ago. All right, well, you're fucking boring. <laughs> I'm going to go talk to the guy with the busted-ass Nato King. <laughs> Hear his story again. Yeah, I don't know what my plan is yet. I'm thinking I'm going to... Play as much of it as you can? Well, I'm going to beat it. I might as well. I mean, I am at... it's not like it's a very long game. <laughs> I'm at the Elite Four, I think, in yellow. Oh, really? I was going to ask you earlier where you were at. And then silver, I don't think I got that far. Uh, well, I'm, I, I can't decide what I'm going to do yet. Because I'm, I'm going to buy blue. I already own yellow. When that when they first released it, I was like, I'm buying yellow today. <laughs> you buy all these games and don't play them. <laughs> oh, no, I've played yellow. You played through it? Uh, uh-huh. I, started, I, I started it. <laughs> Look, I've played yellow numerous times. But I want to get blue. But I don't know if I want to play blue directly after playing red, because you know it's the same fucking game. <laughs> but I might just I might jump to like gold or silver or something. Yeah. Because those are my favorite. Silver is probably my favorite Pokemon game. Period. Yeah, mine too. Which is why I, I need to play it. My, I haven't touched my DS in forever. I just wish. I wish Nintendo would be like, all of those DS games you bought are just on your Switch now. Oh, that'd be fucking fantastic. Because I don't like, I have the DS that's just like one solid, the 2DS. Mm-hmm. I fucking hate it. It's Why? Just, I don't know, it just feels weird. And the screens are much smaller than my Switch. Well, yeah, there's that. I don't know. Yeah, it even just, the you, XLs, the screens are drastically small. And like my buddy has the the 2DS XL, the clamshell one, and it just it feels better. I don't know what the hell it is. I have an XL 3DS, and it's nice. I think a big part of it is the way my thumb sits; it gets kind of cramped. Well, that could be. It's just not comfortable. It's not a good experience. <sighs> well, give Nintendo a call. Just tell yeah. them, hey. Uh... I need all this on the Switch, like, pronto. Hey, yo, Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me that you can call Reggie and be like, hey, yo, Reggie. <laughs> and it he'd be okay with it. I might be able to just tweet him. Oh, speaking of tweeting people from game companies, I had a conversation with Taryn Gregory today. And I know you don't know who that is, so nope. I'm going to look it up. Because he's important to WoW. Okay. Um, in-game cinematic project director. That's cool. Uh, he posted something about the release of Battle for Azeroth. And I was like, yeah, if you guys could just like change that to a different date because it's four days before my wedding and I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. He, he replied he's like sorry congrats about the wedding though well, so it comes out on the 14th no it comes out on the 18th or no 14th yeah wedding's on the 18th yeah but... I was going to say but I'm looking at your wedding invitation <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 sorry I got confused so I, just, I, thought, uh, I, I thought that was cool that he was like oh yeah too bad that's funny. Well, shit, I even got to talk about... You got anything else on Pokemon? You know, get into stuff I've been playing. Uh, no, I think it's about it for Pokemon. And that's all you've been playing lately. Oh, you know what? I did get the new Spin Tires game. That was fucking 
fucking fantastic. Did I buy that? Shit. You better what have because sales that? over. Mud Runner. Yeah. So it's good. Oh, I love it. Anything else on it? <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, I'm waiting for you to like, tell me about it. It's just, so it's <laughs> it's just, just like the game, first one. Yeah. yeah, it's just like the first one, but better. We need to actually it's... play it though, because last time we just dicked around. Well, that's what I've been doing with the new one. Is I've actually been doing like all the goofy okay. login stuff. And uh, yeah, that's no, fucking. It's a lot of fun. I did a, a mission the other day where you have to. You're in a like a fuel tanker, and you have to hook your winch to this truck and utility trailer that's got a like a little Wrangler in the bed, and you have to tow it through these like couple of rivers, and you get like halfway through. And you have to fucking stop what you're doing, back up into the water to tow out this other drowned truck and repair it, and then continue on your way. And it was intense. It took me a long time to fucking do that. For all intents and purposes, this is an open world game. (laughs) Kind of. Yeah, it's it's really neat. It's up there with like farming simulator. Oh, I love this game. This has been a fantastic gaming experience. When when we played it, we just kind of went modding. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? That's still an option because people are already modding the shit out of it. Oh yeah, that's one thing these devs are great about. They're like, "Here's this great game we made. Also, it's completely fucking open. Have your way with yep, it, everyone. <laughs> ma- please make it better." <laughs> Not even, and well, well, sometimes. Devs release games of like, hey, we we did what we could. Yeah. These guys seem like they're pretty good about here is a complete game you don't have to do shit to, but it's if open. you want to. <laughs> yeah, I've had I had a blast playing this the other day. What is the difference? Is this like a sequel or is this like an upgrade of the original? I I it's a sequel, best I can tell, a different maps and stuff. Okay. The the mud physics or whatever is supposed to be better, but. Probably has its own mud engine. I don't know. (laughs) I I really don't know. But uh, it I bought it for three dollars. Yeah, I think I did too. It was well worth three (laughs) dollars. Say what? I spent three dollars in one game. I kind of regret. I definitely Uh, regret. Destiny two. Oh, stop! It hurts. It hurts to stop. It hurts. <laughs> Why you do this to me, Bob? You are causing me physical pain. Just watch next week. I won't be on the show. <laughs> yeah, you're fucking out of here. <laughs> you're fired. Oh, uh, but no, I, I, no, I'm getting really fucking tired of rogue light likes. Whatever. What the hell? The difference is. You are. I am. I don't so know if that's tired. like your favorite thing in the world. It used to be. Now I just I play these games like I played Fancy Skulls. Okay. Is one of the games that uh, I played recently. And this thing is just not loading. So I started playing this, and mm-hmm. I was like, "All right, it's a first-person shooter. So what what's the objective going to be here? It's like go room to room and kill things. Great. So what are you going to yeah. do that's different?" <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to provide you different guns randomly. Okay. What are you going to do differently? Uh, well, certain enemies have critical spots. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Look. What are you going to do differently? Oh, well, we're going to use two colors. Like, get fuck, get the fuck out. <laughs> Just get out. <laughs> I've had it like this genre is so boring and dead. Yeah, well, I mean, I wouldn't you... say boring and dead. Maybe. Have you checked out Moonlighter? I have Moonlighter. Is that a roguelite? Yeah, I... The, the. I haven't got to play it get, yet. When you get into like the dungeon, like after like the initial, uh, the initial like tutorial spots, I'm pretty sure it's you know like a roguelite. In between, you know, you getting back to your shop, and then it's kind of like a yes. management sim. 
Yeah, it's like a dungeon a crawler. You go and get items, and then you sell the items. Yeah. But I, I guess I'm referring more to, like, go out, kill things, and you're done. But you can play again if well, you want to. Well, if like, we want to go into the, the, the not official segment of me mentioning a really random, obscure game. Oh, I got really one, too. Interesting. Oh, no, mine's uh, fucking terrible. Well, it's a, it's a roguelike. We're just going to bring it up. Uh, the Swindle. Oh, okay, you need to bring up my game. Okay. <laughs> the Swindle? <laughs> the Swindle, yeah. So it's like this weird, like, steampunk Victorian era game. It's like you're, you're, uh, you're breaking and entering. You're robbers. You've got 100 days in game. And these places you go in to rob money from, and you're like hacking computers, all this weirdness. Well, it's this all randomly cool. generated. Yeah, the Swindle's awesome. Oh, this is uh, what, this but not yeah, what I'm talking all about this, at all. <laughs> all of this is procedurally generated, you know. Okay. Rogue like, you know, if you if you get caught, that's permadeath for that character. Okay. So you gotta, you know launch in as a new you know swindler i guess and you've got 100 days like you just the the difficulty spikes in this game are insane like <laughs> like it, it at least you know gates it behind like your success stealing money uh so like the more money you get like later higher higher value areas unlock and okay. uh your your skills you unlock are permanent uh, for that for that character. There are uh, certain cert- there are certain things on your skill tree you unlock that are permanent for everybody, but it really punishes you if you get caught for your other guy. You're like, yeah, oh man, my double jump or my stick to walls or my uh, jetpack or my grenades or whatever. Because you can just blow out walls with like explosives, so you can you know like see this and, money here. There's a mine. If you yeah. set that mine off, it'll blow up a lot of stuff. And this is this is not like a game that I'm talking about. I'm talking about a game like Fancy Skulls, or have you seen Immortal Redneck? Uh, I've, I, heard I, I, I've heard of Immortal Redneck. Uh, Jeremy's gonna be mad say, at me because he loves that game. <laughs> Immortal Redneck. A, Go ahead. There's another game kind of like that Fancy Skulls that does a way better job. Ziggurat? Of like, Ziggurat, yeah, of giving you a first-person shooter that actually does stuff that's interesting. Yeah, but none of them, like, the the shooting doesn't really feel that good. Yeah, like, because it's just generic, you know, enemies left or right. Yeah. It's Serious <laughs> Sam. Cool with, powers. It's Serious <laughs> Sam without the personality. Yeah. And like I always enjoyed Serious Sam and uh like Painkiller back in the day. And these are like I guess better. I really want a fucking painkiller roguelike. Why where the what the fuck are the painkiller guys doing? They're, uh, people they're can genre. fly. They're they're making stuff for other companies. They are like the main guys I want to say built the battle royale mode in Fortnite. Really? Yeah, they 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 do a lot of work with Epic. Oh yeah, I know that. Yeah, I don't but know. yeah, their 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 team, you know, was the primary initial on the battle royale mode for Fortnite because they oh, did. Oh wow! Oh yeah. There you go. Quit your bitching. People can fly. So other than making uh, Fortnite, yeah, Gears of War Judgment, <laughs> and um, uh, That's... what is that? Uh, Bullet Storm, Bullet Storm, which is on sale. Bullet Storm right is now. awesome. Bullet Storm I love Bullet Storm. Badass. It's so stupid, but it's so fun. <laughs> uh, I think actually, I want to get Bullet Storm on Xbox. That's kind of an Xbox game for me. The um, Bullet Storm is the better version of the Club. Did you ever? The Club was a game. It was a fir- It was a third person oh. shoot. Yeah, I know of it. I never played it or anything. It was made by like the guys who did Project Gotham Racing. So it was like this terrible like kind of like game show whatever kind of story about you being stuck prisoners like fighting in a game show, like dumb stuff. 
but it was like speed run, skill based, score based, shooting, getting through these areas. And that's what Bullet Storm is, but Bullet Storm just does it way better because you like yeah. slide kick people in the air and shotgun them with like spikes but in the walls. And I think the big difference between a game like Bullet Storm, where they know exactly what they are, and a game like Fancy Skull, Ziggurat, and Immortal Redneck that are essentially just the exact same game. Bulletstorm is like, all right, we're not going to give you a whole lot, but what we're going to do is really fucking good. Whereas these other games are like, we're just going to kind of throw everything at you and not do any of them <laughs> particularly well. Yeah. Talking about like, you know, minimalism that done insanely well. Uh, another random game, Downwell. Yes. Fuck yes. I can play <laughs> Downwell all damn day. And you're just yeah. falling. <laughs> it's just like, hey, we're going to do this one thing so fucking good. It's going to be all you'll want to think about for a couple of days. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I've played that game a bunch. Is that on Switch? That should be on Switch. Well, I know with Ikaruga, at least, you can go portrait mode. If they add Downwell to Switch, they got to go portrait mode. Bob, do you know about Downwell? Nope. Oh my god, it's literally just a shooter where you're falling and you shoot down. <laughs> you or, have it's gun not boots. even a shooter. Yeah, that's right, you have gun boots. I have it on screen right now. I see that. This, it's so uh, much fun. This is a no. No? It's all about combos and timing yeah, and knowing is... what re- reloads your guns, what doesn't. This is but, an you know, immediate no. It is like insanely well designed. It is. Like, it is some of the, like, smartest, like, game design I have seen in the years as far as, like, there's, you know, one button, your boots. It works it's great on button. phone, by the way. Yeah, it was an iOS game originally. Okay. Yeah, it's the Japanese guy. He made this, you know, in his spare time. It's fantastic. Uh, but, yeah, like, there's little side caves you go off into that give you, like, little bit of a break from the insanity of just falling down at all times. Like the little bubble there on the left, if you go in there, you can find like hell power up, stuff like that. But yeah, it's just like the more you learn of like the basic mechanics of the game, the more it then opens up in yeah. other insanity of different types of enemies and how it works. You know, like you bounce on somebody's head that resets your guns, but if you ever touch the ground, it stops your uh, your combo. So you got to like play aggressively onto the enemies at all times to keep your combo going, to keep your score going up. It's crazy. It's a great yeah. game. Yeah, it, lo- it, looks, it looks cool, but it's not a game I would play. It's fun. Like it's honestly like if it's a great phone game. I think it's like a dollar. It's It's fun. I totally forgot about Downwell. I'm going to have to play some of that later. <laughs> but yeah, th- this is a lot of what like high-level Bulletstorm play is, basically. Oh, sure. Is, like, just like the idiotic sliding into people like it's like stupid fucking Vanquish. Like, you're just like <laughs> sliding and shooting everything at all times. Yeah, the other bad roguelike, like, whatever the hell is, is this Tales of Majoranalal. I don't know. It's Tales of Majayal. And it's supposed to be turn-based. Like, did you ever play, um... Oh, what the hell? You move and everything else moves, too. Dungeons of Dreadmore. No. But this game looks terrible. <laughs> yeah, so in Dungeons of Dreadmore, it's a it's a really silly roguelike. You should look it up. It, but when you move, all the other enemies move. And when you attack, they attack. It's basically, you know, every time... It's, like, super hot in a way. And this game has that same core principle of only when you move does everything else move. And this game, like, you can't tell what anything is. It (laughs) seems like it was made in the 1920s. (laughs) It's just... This looks like like Age of Empires 2. No, that's insulting Age of Empires. This looks like something I would have made an RPG maker on the original PlayStation. <laughs> it's, not, it's not good. Nothing's it explained. Look very good. I hated it. It made me mad. 
uh, well, another really dumb roguelike that's a, a shooter, Tower of Guns. Uh, oh yeah, I love Tower of Guns. I, I I didn't. Tower of Guns annoyed me. Tower of Guns was fun because I enjoyed the weapons. That was also probably the first one I really played. So that's kind of my go-to for roguelite shooters. And that's the one I kind of compare everything to. Like, Mother Gunship's coming out soon. That's their new one, and that looks pretty fun. Have you seen that? Yeah, that one looks interesting. Yeah, cause I didn't just... realize it was the same guys. Yeah, you're just building onto your gun and making a giant mass. <laughs> just... That's, again, that's, you know, they're putting a special twist on something. Tower of Guns is fun because I really like the humor. I like the way it looked, and, like, I like... That's a... But that's a game that shoots really well. I would say the other ones we were talking about do not shoot very well. Yeah, the 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 stuff worked well on Ziggurat. It just didn't feel good. I I thought Ziggurat was terrible. Yeah, I mean it, it was it was like, oh hey, I'm playing like a, a mod for Hexen. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> was this 1998? <laughs> like what am I doing here? <laughs> but uh, one other like rogue like. You you're talking about you know you like the art style and the humor is like Flint Hook. Have you tried that one out? Is that a robot? I, I want to try yeah. that one. I I wish I liked it more. Like it's skill based platforming, and a, it's like it's it's a roguelike because you're going into these like space pirate ships, and there's you know like. It's basically like cell structured. So like each screen is like a different cell and they have so many different like variations of those that the ships are built out of. But yeah, I'd love the style. I love the music. But then I was just like two hours in, I was like, really? This is still this game? This is <laughs> this is all this <laughs> still is? I was like, uh But it, it looks cool. This doesn't look like Celeste doesn't look like it's for me. I don't think this looks like it's for me either. Well, Celeste is just a straight up like insanely hard platformer. Yeah. This is, you know, not you know, as well structured. It is get loot, you unlock uh different things to do like you uh, you have like a secondary weapon to fight enemies with. You have other like abilities to do different things. At least with Celeste, you know, it's it's just, hey, get good. <laughs> I'll I'll tell you what game absolutely was for me was uh, Cook Serve Delicious. <laughs> this game, okay, and I I used to work at a rest. I've worked at multiple restaurants. My family, I grew, I grew up with one because my family owned one. This game is as close to a restaurant simulator as you are ever gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> Have you played this game, Troll? No, I I had not heard of it until I, today. I had Bob in my chat when I was streaming, panicking, just listening to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was so, at work, and I was oh, my God. You, what it is, you'll have four people that can come in at a time, and you have a set. Like, you choose the food that you serve. So in this case, I was serving pizza, corn dogs, and beer, I think. So For pizza. Breakfast. This was yeah. breakfast. Well, it's all day. So at, at this point in the game, somebody comes in and they say, I want an Italian pizza. So it's tomato sauce, cheese, sausage, mushrooms, olives, and onions. So let's see the first, if I can go back a little bit. Nope, that's too Okay, so yeah, if they want tomato sauce, cheese, and pepperoni like this one, I have to hit T, C, and P on my keyboard. And then if you know they want all that other stuff, they have to go open up the other menu. And hit those keyboard commands. And then I have to hit uh, enter to cook it. I have to keep an eye on it while it's up there. Because it's cooking. You can overcook it. And then serve it. And then like beer. It was like holding down. Down I think. Is what served that. And you have to hold it down until it gets to a certain point. And, and people just get upset for no fucking reason. And <laughs> <laughs> it. It's one of those games where, like, I could literally play this all day. I guarantee you there will be at least a few more videos of this game from me. <laughs> and every type of food is different. Like, the pizza, you just have to stack it, then cook it. Beer, you just pour it. Uh, corn dogs, you just choose. Like, if they want ketchup and mustard, 
you press K and M, or you just press K and then serve it. Uh, I think much later I was making. Yep, I'm making steak, which is they want like four different types of seasonings. So you have to hit those. See, here we go. They want to season three times. Damn, I must have really done that one quick. <laughs> so, so you hit the seasoning button three times, and then you juice it. <laughs> and then you start cooking it, and again, you have to keep an eye on it and then serve it at a certain time to keep these people happy. And then you can buy upgrades of things. Oh, yeah, you have to do dishes sometimes. You have to unclog the toilet. I loved it. I love this game so much. <laughs> this and Battle this reminds Chef. Me, this, this reminds me of... Uh, I was trying to find the name... Uh, it was like a PS2 era like game where like you were a worker. It was a Japanese game. You're you're working a fast food restaurant, and you were just going you know left, right, forward, behind the counter, just doing this exact same stuff. You're just grabbing, throwing the stuff together, keeping an eye on it. It was just like just juggling little timers, and random customers would be unhappy. You need to go up to the counter and do all this other crap. Talk about Diner Dash. Uh, no, it's like a Diner Dash is like a mobile game. Yeah, it, it was. It's kind of like I think it's the same people that make Cooking Mama. Oh, okay. But yeah, it, like it, it's an old old game, and I think it was a series. Huh. I don't know. Yeah, I think I, I've started uh, to realize that I really like this game and Battle Chef Brigade. And I really like Overcooked. I- <laughs> I think the whole restaurant theme is really starting to shine through. <laughs> yeah, I played a bunch of that and really enjoyed it. I got to play more of that. Um, I, I Oh, no, one of the games with gold this month, I think we talked about this on our Discord, was uh, Assault Android Cactus. Saying that? Yeah. yeah. I remember hearing the name. The I game is really off. neat. Of course, the video, there it goes. I don't typically like these shoot 'em up style games, but this one was actually really good. All the different characters have different styles of weapons, very different styles of weapons. Um, you have a timer at the top, which is that battery, so you have to be picking up batteries. The shooting felt really good. You know, it doesn't really, it's not something to write home about. Yeah, it's. Just like a well-made student project game, basically, is what it felt like. It really... I would love to play it, like, co-op. This is the kind of thing, though, that, like, I really like when Xbox gives me games like this. Because I would probably never buy this, but I will play more of this, because it's, like, it's free. Yeah, it's it's, it's one of those games where if it got below on PSN, I probably would have given it a shot. <laughs> but, yeah... If, for free, at least it was. Uh, I, I had a good about like an hour and a half, two hours with it. And they switch it up a little bit. There's one level here. Here it is, where the lights. Yeah, go that out. one. <laughs> the lights go out. There's a uh, different patterns in the floor. There was one I was playing that had like yeah, this one right here. This one was like as far as like getting above a C, because yeah, like some of the lights rendering on the enemies were. Like really off. So there would be times where like they would just crawl up behind you like, well, who are you? What are you doing? Get away from me. <laughs> but I, I figured out the game I was talking about. Oh, what's that? Apparently, it's called Yoshi Noya. So it, apparently it's a, it's a ramen restaurant, like fast food chain in Japan. And they made a game on the PS2. So it's like, Yoshi, you know, like the Mario character, N O Y A. Oh yeah, I got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's your weekly trolls random ass game. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like so like it is just, you know, go up, hit the buttons at the right time. Oh look at that. It's actually an image of the, the ramen too. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's it's a terrible picture of the actual like display menu from That's the restaurant funny. pretty much. That's hilarious. Yeah, uh, yeah. Th- this, this, whatever reason that Cook Serve Delicious reminded me of this because it really is just like you hit the button at the right cue to do the right thing, but if you do it wrong, then the customer gets mad. Like you yeah. saw, like the happiness bar on one side. 
I went down a lot of weird, weird paths in life with <laughs> video games. <laughs> yeah, I want to play more Cook Serve Delicious. I wonder if there's a ramen option. That would be awesome. I'll have to find out. I'm going to have to find out now. I think they added a ramen option now to Overcooked 2. Probably. There's just all kinds they, of stuff in Overcooked. Yeah, they, they added a couple of new, like, insane, like, six, seven ingredient recipes to cook too because <laughs> they want they want to tear families apart that's Dude, what me, overcooked is all about me and kimberly played overcooked and we can't that's gonna ruin our relationship <laughs> like, my friend shit. i told him like hey you know overcooked cool. don't try to play it with your son his oldest son <laughs> and then like two days later he's like yeah i don't install overcook off of my playstation because i realized just yelling it at him at the top of my lungs like this is <laughs> like six-year-old son is fucking up he yeah. was like this this is not good for anybody like what is this <laughs> my, my dad's got like a cool game room set up at his house for uh, him and the boys and i can't remember what the boys suggested we all play it wasn't overcooked but it was something i was like I'm not playing that with dad. <laughs> no, and Overcooked is one of those. Like, I'm not playing that with them because, like, they get too into games and it gets too emotional and then things are going to happen. And no, because just me and Kimberly playing it was like, all right, I need two onions or, or, you know, two tomatoes. Like, okay, did you cut up the tomatoes? I'm getting it right now. Well, do it faster. Like, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I got to have dishes. Well, why didn't you do the dishes? Well, I'm doing them right now. Okay, get them right now. Did you cook those onions? No, I'm getting it right now. Then why didn't you do it before? It's just, yeah, it's too much. It's like, hey, I'm bringing the last ingredient we need to level. Oh, no, the fucking ghost on the table. <laughs> yeah, that too. And then there's that added element of like whatever the hell the level is doing to you. Yeah, that's not that, that's oh, a hey. fucking fantastic game I don't want to play. <laughs> this can't be safe. We're cooking on moving trucks with giant open sides. Like, what is this? That is a game that I will happily watch all my favorite YouTubers play, but I will not play. <laughs> I gave it a shot. Like, I thought when I saw, like, the initial, like, Overcooked 2 stuff, uh, like, I guess they showed it off at uh, the Nintendo Switch E3, like, thing. Initially, this year, they added, like, the ability to, like, throw stuff. Yeah. And I thought, all right, that'd be cool. And then I remembered, no, they're fucks. They're going to make this. <laughs> they're they're going to find a way to make this worse. Yeah. And make you hate people even more. It's like, oh, yeah. I mean, hey, catch, catch you know, the sun real quick. All right. I don't have to run over there. I can, you know, have a nice little buffer window from before the table goes flying off and the <laughs> map shuffles. We also got to figure no. out, like, you really need that ingredient. If somebody overthrows it or underthrows it, it's like, you fucking idiot. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a mechanic to catch it. You have to hit A button to catch it. Otherwise, it just bounces around in your kitchen. And then you got to chase after it. That's going to cause even more stress. And I also want to say, I think they added where, like, stuff stays on the ground too long. Like, rats come in and steal your ingredients. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I, 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 I want to say they added a mechanic to where, like, I would see people trying to, you know, like, three-star all the levels in Overcooked, and they'd just be, like, spamming ingredients out on the floor. So they could just run and grab it as they needed it. Oh, and then, yeah, yeah, that's if, right. If occasionally, you know, those things just start going away, it's like, ah, oh, you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of the Switch, you did mention earlier uh, before the show, obviously, that Warframe was getting going, getting going on the Switch. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> getting put on the Switch. Yeah, they just announced that today. They had their TennoCon because Tenno are the ninjas. That's funny because all right now is also Guardian Con. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I think the average person at TennoCon is probably. That's probably what we lost our audio. <laughs> I said the average person at TennoCon is probably happy they're there to support. <laughs> oh yeah. But well, uh, I played a bunch of Warframe. Why is there all of a sudden Diablo playing? Hell, and then that was Call of Duty. What is this video I picked out? Yeah. What? What the hell? 
All right. <laughs> That's an odd compilation. Those are those are clearly divergent, you know, groups of people that'd be interested in most of those games that just showed. Because then that was Dragon Age and what? I don't know what the hell all that was. But yeah, like like like, like I had mentioned before, like adding a grind heavy game like that, you can just jump on, jump in, jump out, check in on your timers. The people that play the Switch portably, if that game runs well. That that'll be interesting to see because, like I had said, like when the when this game initially released in Japan, like the amount of people that this game blew up for in a lot of the Asian markets, and you know, you think of the accessibility and the popularity of the Switch in Japan. I have a feeling this game is going to ruin some lives. <laughs> like <laughs> this game was already a terrible grind and took way too much time, and now you don't have to be sitting at home on your computer. Right. It can go wherever you want to now. Uh, it's going to be rough. And here you go. But yeah, it's... And resources. So basically what it is, is, this game is very much a hack and slash, third person shooter, kill a bunch of things, gather materials. And then what you do is you take those materials and you can build things, which is showing right now. So like those daggers, you would need all those materials and then once you have the materials, you say, okay, build it. And it takes actually three days, like 72 actual hours to build that weapon. And then once you've done that, see it's showing right now, two days left on that rhino. Uh, and once you do that, then you put on that gear, that that new ability suit. Uh, I don't know what the hell they're called. The, the char- They're different characters. Yeah, the, the frames. 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 They, shut up. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> yeah, the title of the game. The, the well, name it should have been more obvious, damn it. It's Yeah, it's literally the name of the game. Uh, You level those up, and you it gets better, more powerful. You go on different missions to get more powerful things, and you switch out your weapons. And But the main part of it is the cards. And I can't, I think, can't think of what... They might just be called mods. Yeah, they're they're mods is basically yeah. what they're. I believe the actual term for. Yeah, and the mods do things that li- li- literally just like increasing your shotgun damage, but also like applying lightning to your shotgun damage, doing crazy things to your abilities. Um, it is free to play, but you can. There's all kinds of stuff you can buy, and a lot of it's expensive as hell. But you also don't have to buy it. You can grind. Yeah, it. but like I had mentioned also. Like the the market that's willing to spend money, this game has a very help to where if you're willing to do the legwork, you can make a bunch of that platinum selling pieces, selling cards to other people in game, and then facilitating. You know, you like, oh hey, I wanted to buy that Warframe, but I didn't want to literally spend a month grinding to get all the blueprint pieces, then grinding to have enough mats. Then waiting three days for the thing to build. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, and I think I'm okay with there being an option to pay for it because, you know, sometimes you just want to skip things. The prices in Warframe are a little bit ridiculous. But I guess it's also like if people are willing to pay for it, then yeah. fuck it. <laughs> like I said, it's, it's been completely free since day one. Actually, I yeah. do had like a founder. Because and it's the founders completely pack. free. Like they've added a yeah. ridiculous amount of stuff to this game, and the community like loves this game. You know the 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 crazy thing. I still can't. Say every time I remember Warframe exists, is like the history of how this game came. So like Digital Extremes, you know, they made a trailer for the game Dark Sector. And if you go see the original like PS3 oh, right. launch trailer of Dark Sector, it's like a ninja like one of these ten in space. Yeah, and I think the games are even linked somehow. Yeah, the, the Dark Sector happens in the same universe yeah. as this game. But then you see the, the game Dark Sector like they had to they had to refocus based on like the publisher who was giving them money. They had to scrap all this cool like weird hype trailer of like space ninjas and zero gravity. And there's just a, a dude in like Europe fighting aliens. 
<laughs> but it's actually supposed to be a pretty decent game, I think. Yeah, the, that game was cool, and they have the same weapon in Warframe, the glaive. Yeah. Like the flying spinning disc. And I just remember, like, I just never thought in my life I'd play a game based on the Giver that was cool. Because <laughs> the Giver is not cool. <laughs> I, I enjoy it a lot. They've added they just added a open world game to it as well. Yeah, the planes of Eidolon, I wanna yeah. say. Yeah. And they, they add some pretty crazy stuff to it. They've added like companions and they're always adding new warframes and new weapons and if you have Twitch Prime they've give I've gotten two different primes at this point, two different prime warframes. But and I think the, this game is gonna continue for a long time. Yeah, I mean they've got their Switch. own convention now. Yeah, like it's that's on Switch. Been now. around for a couple of years. The only thing like I've seen people say like, well, how's it gonna work offline? I don't think it is. I just think there's not gonna be any offline functionality to it. Well, why not? It's because just, they don't have online functionality. What's the offline functionality for Fortnite? There is none. Yeah, but but Warframe can be played as a single player game. But it has yeah to be online. online. Yeah. So I th- yeah I think just Switch is not gonna have you're not gonna be able to play Warframe if you're not online, which is unfortunate. But it's just one of those games, and I quite frankly I hope we get more hear, of them. I can hear the trolls already complaining about oh, we're gonna pay for Nintendo's online service to play this. Mm, maybe. Well, we hopefully can't... Nintendo goes the Sony route and not the Xbox. No, I don't want him to go the Sony route. What the fuck? What well, no, I'm you? saying you can play any of the free to play games on PlayStation Plus. You don't have to have it. Oh, on okay. Xbox, you have to have Xbox Live to play War or yet to play Warframe or to play Fortnite. Hopefully, they don't require you to have the online service to play the free to play games. They might. It's only it's also twenty dollars a year for a year. That's my point, is it's really not that big of a deal, but somebody's going to fucking complain about it. Somebody's yeah. already going to complain about it. They're already complaining that you can't, you probably won't be able to play, no, I definitely won't be able to play Warframe offline on the Switch. But, like, I remember when I was playing, when it first launched on the PS4, like, how many people were complaining that they couldn't get Excalibur Prime because that was only for founders and, like, Kickstarter backers or whatever the hell. And you can't trade that prime frame to anybody. Huh. Well, I mean, that's only for founders. Yeah. Also, Excalibur is boring as fuck. Excalibur was awesome. <laughs> like, once you got him set up right, Excalibur is fucking great. Excalibur is boring. Hey, Excalibur. Excalibur is all aggro at all times. As soon as I got Vault, I was like, nope, Excalibur's terrible. <laughs> yeah, Rhino was broken for a long time. Rhino was just so, over- and then Vobin, like the the weird, the weirdo with the bounce pad, floaty oh, prison thing. One. That sounds cool. Yeah, he was a troll character, pretty much. Like he was really good, but he had these little grenades you threw out that became bounce pads. Huh. So you would be trying to go through a tunnel to get to the extraction here, like you see in the video. And I'd throw one in the tunnel behind me and people just boing, 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 get stuck. <laughs> They'd be like, you, you bastard. <laughs> and then finally the grenade would expire. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there just giggling the whole time because I'm a terrible person. <laughs> I hope we get more free-to-play games. And I think now that fucking Warframe and Fortnite, like the two biggest free-to-play games other than... League of Legends, which I, we're not going to get on the Switch. I hope we get more games like that on the Switch. I'm all for it. I'm all for any games for the Switch at this point. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a lot of random shovelware coming out for the Switch. Well, that's every platform, though. It's just... yeah, They're really dumping it hard on the Switch because there's money to be had in the all, all these shovelware guys like, there's gold in them, our hill. Yeah, no shit. Well, that's because they know people will be sold on nostalgia. 
With just being on Nintendo? Yeah. Yeah. Just like, oh, there's a Nintendo console. I have to have it. And there's so many games that are obviously mobile ports. There's one game I can't figure out what the hell it is. It's Suicide Guy. Have you seen that this? sounds familiar. That, I like, saw it in the store. Yeah, and I was it's, like, what the hell is that? it's like a really weird puzzle game where you, oh. your guy ends up killing himself at the end of every puzzle to wake up from a dream or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. It looks kind of neat, but yeah, it's just weird. <laughs> But and and yeah, and the thing about trolls, like you were saying, not this troll, not troll beard, but bad trolls, <laughs> <laughs> is typically they're like the quote unquote fans. We were talking about fandom earlier. Oh God, <laughs> fans of things. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's such a nasty, toxic environment for some reason. It, I had this exact conversation, honestly, at work earlier today, talking to somebody while I was on my lunch, and it was like, the the amount of hatred I have in my heart, every time I've ever heard somebody say the term, it's ruining my childhood, it's like, no, yeah. it's not. <laughs> the things that are happening now do not affect anything that's ever happened in the past. You're being a bitch. Yeah. Stop associating, like, stop latching on, like, like, how hollow of a person are you that this is the only thing that completes you? Like, <laughs> like, it's, it's like, I, I know some people have a, have a struggle mentally, emotionally out there, but this is unhealthy levels of attachment to right. where. Yeah, dude, I'm a Street Fighter fan. You know how many fucking terrible Street Fighter games and movies we've had? My ho- my childhood's fine. <laughs> yeah. Because I go, well, fuck that shit. I'll take the stuff I can like. <laughs> but to be fair, this isn't, you know, talking about anybody who likes Kingdom Hearts because their childhood was ruined because they liked Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing about fandom is like, and we've, we've talked about this on a For Future Villains podcast. Uh, titled please don't talk about it <laughs> I've actually been told that I'm not supposed to talk about Rick and Morty because the fans are terrible oh my god <laughs> and it's like what? Wait, but I'm not <laughs> come on yeah. place for them and uh, I think a big part a big part of like the bad fans a good example of that has been the stuff with Total Biscuit coming out and, you know, full disclosure, I am a massive Total Biscuit fan. The reason we're here doing this today is because of Total Biscuit. And and recently there was the thing with Guild Wars. And holy shit. <laughs> Did you see what, like, what the lady said? Yeah, it's it's one of those things where, like, I, 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 I try to be neutral going in to every situation. Because yeah. at the end of the day, I don't fucking care. You know, I mean, regardless of anything, it's never going to affect my life. And most of the time, the really, like, ridiculous shit you see was all just a bunch of trolls jumping into the thing and escalating it beyond what it ever really was. And then people end up losing their jobs, unfortunately, in the case of Guild Wars. It's like... It's like aimed at... I don't know. I don't understand, like, even if somebody, like, when somebody passes away that I didn't like, I don't understand the point in going after them. Yeah, like, like in, intentionally trying to upset people because they're more vulnerable now. But like, they just see it. There's so many people who have taken shots at Total Biscuit now, and it's like, what the fuck are you doing it now for? You should have done it before, but you know that he would have taken your ass down. But now he's not here to do that. So you're going to take your fucking cheap shots now? That's fucking also, pathetic. It is. Also, somewhat related to the Guild Wars thing, is probably a high overlap of the same trolls. Because I, cause, like, I, I didn't know Total Biscuit very well. What he did. I just remember the most times I ever heard about him, other than, unfortunately, his passing, was the Gamergate horse shit from a few years ago. 
And I don't entirely understand what the fuck happened with all that. So, but anyway, I just remember people being unhappy with his opinions and stances on the situation. And the Guild Wars situation, like th- this this woman, you know, they had had like a red AMA. And this woman has a long history of experience in, you know, writing narrative for video games. And she was basically saying, like, I she doesn't know if it's possible to make uh, a MMO dialogue where your character feels individual, because that's kind of against the entire point of how MMOs work. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, and this guy, you know, he made a dumb suggestion, a suggestion if you've ever thought about it once, you imagine everybody else has thought about it, because the only thing I ever see anybody ever complain about any RPG of any kind ever is dialogue trees. This guy says, hey, what about dialogue trees? Maybe it'd give us, you know, more investment in our own personal character to role play. And the the woman responded poorly. And I don't know if it's, you know, the fact that there are actual asshats out there that do all sorts of terrible shit and say all sorts of weird, creepy shit to any woman in any industry. Because, like, I've I've gone through, like, Twitter threads of, like, the mentions of some women, especially, like, women that professionally are, like, cosplayers. The internet is fucking dark for those yeah. ladies. <laughs> but she she immediately responds to, like, a dumb suggestion that never mentioned anything about her gender specifically. Right. She she escalated as though it was a personal attack, and by mentioning her gender and saying, "Hey, today in being a female game dev, some rando ass hat telling me how to do my job." Some like the 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 phrase "rando ass hat" is an actual quote, and I just kind of <laughs> like that. But now by then escalating it, even though this poor guy, who just just seems dumb. Now that breeds the room for the internet trolls. The people that, you know, either A, think anybody who doesn't immediately agree with the woman is wrong, or the people that just don't like women in general, or just the people that are there just to start shit. Like, all of those people got involved, and it escalated beyond a point to where these two people, the guy that worked with this woman that defended her, and the woman now after having worked for this company for like 10 years are just gone like overnight. Well, and I guess the thing that really uh, set her over the edge, like they decided to get rid of her was she tweeted out the kindest thing I can say is I'm glad he's no longer around to keep doing harm. And someone asked who passed. She said T asterisk T A L B asterisk S K U I T. Like, we weren't going to fucking figure out what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Why? If you're going to talk shit, talk shit, motherfucker. I just don't... Under- mm. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Oh. Oh, but, well, before we go any further, the next respond to that was, you know, who passed Total Biscuit? Someone said, as did your career. <laughs> <laughs> so again yeah, oddly enough like i said like this weird like misguided feminism because yeah there there are terrible situations happening to women in most situations but the the gamergate thing and those particular things that happened it's been a long time i don't remember but i just remember a lot of people were overreacting yeah and that's essentially what I remember Total Biscuit essentially saying. And then now you just became a target. You had an opinion. You're not going along with the mob. Now you must be punished. <laughs> but it's it's just unfortunate because it just just no advice to anybody. I mean, unless you know the person, text is the wrong place to try to have a dialogue. Yeah. Big time. And Twitter especially you're just making bait because this poor woman, she's not a public facing personality. 90% of her job. She does work. And then you see the product in the game and she's not, you know, skilled necessarily at, you know, public facing like that 
social media hustle, you have to be a specific person to do well at social media. Yeah, and if you but... just have a natural response and the company expects you to toe this line, to have these skills, apparently everybody has to be very good at self-representing on social media now. I, that's Keep unfair, though, that she's basically like, well, thank God he's dead. Like, that's yeah, not no, even social no, media. Not... That's like, that's common fucking decency to just shut yeah, the hell that... up. That that's you know the echo chambers fighting each other. It's, you like, know it's like that X X Tentacion guy that died. Yeah. I don't care for him. He he looks I don't know looks like somebody would not like. Not okay that he died. You know, the, the, whenever Alex Jones dies, I'm not gonna be happy about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it'll always be unfortunate, and. I just, I'll never understand people going after someone that's dead. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's just like people aren't allowed to make mistakes anymore. <laughs> According to the internet trolls. Yeah, and the thing about, you know, you can't tell over text. Like, I work from home, and a lot of my communication with coworkers is over text. And I can't tell you the amount of times someone said something nasty, and I'm like, wow, calm down, dude. He's like, oh, I'm just kidding. Like, I can't tell. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just insane that people, I don't know, maybe we need like more communication classes in high school because people clearly don't understand how to fucking communicate. Yeah, well, reading <laughs> comprehension in this case would probably <laughs> be the yeah, primary focus. I guess. Because <laughs> I, I, I had a random situation on Reddit making a comment about something and it was to the point like this guy's response was like so drastic where I had to look into like his user history to see if he was like just an obvious troll. And no, he just seemed like a, a normal person. But for whatever reason, one word sets this guy off. <laughs> Trigger word. Triggered. Yeah. And I was like, like word. the word vast just stuck in this guy's craw when I made Jeez. like, <laughs> like an analogy to something you know, involving like Nintendo and Mario silly shit like dumb things but then this guy i was like wow that's a that, that's that's a ramp up in your response like <laughs> that escalated quickly <laughs> yeah that escalated real quickly it's like yeah i guess i guess i guess text you know it's a, it's, it's a struggle out there <laughs> yeah i mean I think that's why instagram has become so popular because it's just all pictures yeah hey, that's fair look at the thing <laughs> Hey, this is what I mean. I, if I say it in text, it'll be wrong. Yeah, I, I made a, a trigger joke at work one day, and I got a million messages from a person saying, "This is not funny." Like, do you not? Are you uh, unaware of like our veterans and all these things? And I was just like, "That's not what I was talking about." Good <laughs> lord! Just kept messaging me like, "I don't want to talk about it at work." <laughs> Go away. <laughs> but yeah, people just find every reason they can to be offended and. I'm sure someone's gonna be offended by this con- this conversation. And which, if you are offended, make sure you share it everywhere. Tell everyone how fucking terrible we are. Bob in particular. Bob is awful. Yeah, he is. I was just watching a video earlier. Oh, it was a, a division video, and the guy was like, "Well, I've been playing today, and I've got Big Bad Bob here helping me." And I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Bob is playing the division with everyone but me. No. <laughs> There's another big bad Bob out there. Must be. I'm not big bad Bob anymore, though. That's true. Well, you are somewhere. No, I'm not. Well, no, I am for Battle.net, I guess. That's what it is. I don't know what I am for... Uh, Not Battle.net, but the other one. Yeah, the know. Ubisoft platforms. Yeah, Ubisoft. All right, let's settle this right now. <laughs> oh, oh shit. Okay, what? Because I I think we've all said it both ways here tonight. Okay. Is it Ubisoft? Yes. Or is it Ubisoft? Ubi. So it's ubiquitous. It's U- ubiquitous. It's Ubi. ubiquitous software. Yeah. Okay. Because was the actual original name of the company. Okay. And that's then they I realized thought, that's but... a fucking terrible name and they <laughs> Ubisoft. No, it's not a terrible name. People you... just keep getting dumber. You... Oh, no, you're right. So now we have to make it casual. 
Yeah, well, filthy casual name like Ubisoft. Any any of these like French based companies, any name is better than Info. <laughs> R.I.P. Better than what? <laughs> Infogroms. Oh God. <laughs> they 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 were a well known publisher back then. Huh. And I think like they've since been bought out. Oh, I'm sure they'll come back like potentially by too. Ubisoft. Probably. Because I think Infogrames made, like, the driver games. Oh. Okay. And they may have published, like, one of the Tomb Raiders at one point. Dog. Dog, be quiet. Dog. Dog. All right, guys. Well, I think that's a good signal for... Dog. (laughs) Leela. That's going to be a no for me, dog. Be quiet. She doesn't like Infogrames, to be fair. Yeah, so uh, did you guys have anything else you wanted to bring up? Any other games you've been playing you're going to play? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Guild and WoW is up and running now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, so there's that. We're on Trollbane. Yeti members? Seven, last I checked. I haven't been awesome. on in a little while. That's more than one. So, yeah, look us up. We are future villains. Make sure you tell all the members about the website and everything. Uh, yeah, I need to put that in the in the. What what website is that? You ask Bob. Well, you can I, find. I didn't ask. I didn't ask. Shut up. I, I didn't ask. <laughs> you can find this podcast. Nobody asked for this. <laughs> you can find the Future Heels podcast. You can find all my content, Bob's content. Uh, the Lark Brothers are getting ready to put out a new video, and they better be. Oh shit! I got a video edit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have a video to edit because they just went and filmed stuff today, I think. I hope. I hope I'm not speaking out of line here. Uh, but the Lark Brothers, <laughs> they just put out, well, they just put out a new video from the Invasion, which was an awesome event they went to. Um, I'm doing Project 168 still. I'm going to be streaming some more tomorrow. And I'm going to start streaming Battle Chef Brigade. Uh, Bob, are you making anything? Uh, I'll probably be streaming some WoW. There you go. Hopefully. But uh, it's... Been a little crazy. You making on, anything, troll? On my end. Uh, I'm probably like when I get off work, mostly tomorrow night, I'll probably getting balls deep in that tennis, you know, the Mario tennis. <laughs> We're not making videos in it. <laughs> gonna go, gonna go figure out why Waluigi isn't. All right, before he starts going off on Waluigi. So thank you for listening, guys. This has been episode three, the first ever episode three of Future Future Gamers Podcast. I don't know what podcast I'm doing anymore. (laughs) If you like this podcast, you can find us on iTunes, on Google. You can find everything on the Future Villains website. That's futurevillains.com, F-E-W-T-R-U-E-V-I-L-L-A-I-N-S.com. You can find me on Twitter at Best in the Realm, Facebook Best in the Realm Gaming, Instagram is just Future Villains. Bob, where can they find you on social media? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Doug Theme Song, and you can find me on Twitch at uh, Blackbeard Bob. Trollbeard. Uh, pretty much any platform you can think of. Just Trollbeard with the underscore at the end. There it is. All right, so uh, thank you for listening, guys. I have a hotkey set up, so I'm just going to end the stream by pressing this button.